in this video we are going to discuss viruses now what are these viruses exactly so in this video we are going to in particular discuss the definition of virus what is the history behind it how was it discovered then we'll discuss the size shape and classification of viruses okay so let's start with the definition so first question that arises is why are we not keeping it in a particular kingdom why we are discussing viruses in detail separately so basically as per the definition okay viruses are nucleoprotein entity okay now this is a nucleoprotein entity but it is able to utilize the machinery of a living cell okay now this living cell is of another organism for its multiplication okay so in simple terms basically it did not find the place in classification as they are non cellular organisms okay so they have inert crystalline structure outside the living cell so if they not they are not into a host they are inert crystalline structure okay that is they do not involve growth and division they do not grow or divide if they are outside the host organism so basically they live on the host and once they infect the cell so once they infect the cell what they do is they take over the machinery of that host cell okay and what they do is they replicate okay and resulting in killing the host so that is why they are involved in various plants and animal diseases they cause plant and animal diseases okay okay so they are such entity which are basically inert crisp and crystalline structure outside the host cell that is they are not able to grow or divide but once they infect the cell once they enter into a host cell they become active they take over the machinery of the host cell to replicate and that results in killing of the host cell okay so that is the entire definition of virus okay now let's move towards the history of how they were discovered okay. so let's discuss the history now okay so one very important name that is pasteur dj anonski okay so he basically is known as is really known for the discovery of viruses and what he did is he basically named it as as virus now virus word means venom or poisonous okay so in 1890 okay and he discovered that in a plant that is tobacco so he basically discovered the tobacco mosaic virus 
that is TMV. Okay, then there is another name that is like on various basis like Stanley. In 1935, basically she discovered that viruses could be crystallized and these crystals are basically proteins. Okay, then one more name was there that is Enders. So in 1949, he cultured the polio virus. Okay, so there are various factors. Basically, these uh, uh, scientists uh, discovered various kind of viruses. Okay, so some characteristics of viruses are like viruses are obligate parasites. Okay, so they live on a host and ultimately kill the host. Okay, now outside the host cell it is inert. So they are of no use outside the host cell. They only become active once they enter the host cell. Okay, and this inert virus is known as virion. Okay, now it can be crystallized. As Enders mentioned, that is, it can be crystallized and stored. Okay. And this can be done indefinitely. So there is no, no timeline of how long they survive. Which actually makes them fit. Okay. Then they don't have their own machinery as in for biosynthesis. They cannot survive on their own. So they don't have a biosynthetic synthetic machinery. Okay, these are the features or characteristics of viruses. Okay, then they are not a they they do not divide or multiply outside the host world. Like typical organism, they are not able to divide or multiply outside the host body. Okay. And instead of even multiplication inside the host, what they do is they have independent formation. And then what they do is they they reproduce like this and then using the parts, the various parts that they have formed independently, they produce virus particles. Okay. So basically, they even lack motility. They are non-motile. Not there. Okay, so what all features did we discuss? First, they are obligate parasite. Okay, so if they survive inside the host, killing it. Then they are inert outside the host cell. And this inert virus is known as virion. Then they can be crystallized and stored indefinitely. There is no biosynthetic machinery. So they cannot survive on their own outside the host cell. They do not divide or multiply outside the host body. So they do not have any mechanism to divide or multiply independently. Then they, how do they form? They form independent formations are there and there, which results into virus particles. Okay. And they are non-motile. They are non-motile. So these are some of the features of the viruses. Now we'll discuss the size of the viruses. What is the variation in the size of that virus? So we'll discuss the size. Okay, so these are very small entity viruses are. Okay. 
small entity and microscopic basically. Now it may vary from 10 nanometer. Okay, an example of uh, a small virus maybe of 10 nanometer is in cattle, we have foot and mouth virus. Okay, of cattle. Okay, and then it can go up to one micrometer, which is known as megavirus. So they are microscopic entities and it can be of 10 nanometer, it can be of 1 micrometer to the maximum. Now there are certain examples like 17 nanometer is alpha alpha mosaic virus. Okay, then we have tobacco mosaic virus that is TMV. So this basically is 300 into 17.5 nanometer. So we are considering a 2D structure. Okay, so 300 into 17.5 nanometer. Okay, then we have pseudomonas. Now that is exactly 1300 into 6 nanometer. So this is all about the size. So basically they are microscopic and can vary from 10 nanometer to 1 micrometer. Okay. Next we will discuss is the shape. So what is the shape of viruses. So basically there are three forms. Okay. This is all three. First is helical. Okay. So basically an elongate body and exactly a shape of helix. Okay. This is elongate body forming helix and example is tobacco mosaic virus. So TMV basically is helix. Example. Second one is cuboidal. Okay. Cuboidal basically is shorter broad body with maybe rhombic or some kind of polyhedral shape so this is shorter broad body okay. and having maybe rhombic or polyhedral shape Example is polio virus. So this shape exactly would be like maybe this, wherein there will be okay. something like this. And polyhedral it should be, and it is the polio virus. Poliomyelitis virus. Okay. Third one is binal. Okay. So binal here means having both cuboidal. and helical structure okay so they have both so maybe the head is polyhedral and then there is a body with a helix okay so this kind of shape will be binal an example of this 
is bacteriophages. What are bacteriophages? It's like T2. So basically, virus who depends on bacteria as their host body. So these are the three forms. What are these, these three forms? Helical, cuboidal, and binal. Helical are the body is elongated, it has helix. Example is tobacco mosaic virus. TMV. Then we have cuboidal, where is the body shorter and broader and has polyhedral shape. So any polyhedral shape you can think of. An example is poliomyelitis virus, poliovirus. Third is binal, wherein we have put the other two forms, that is cuboidal and helical. Example is bacteriophages like T2. So it has a polyhedral and a helical body. Okay, this is the entire thing of what kind of shape viruses has and lastly we will discuss the classification of virus. Okay, okay. so basically uh, the viruses are classified on the basis of genetic material that they have. Okay. So genetic material can either be DNA or RNA. Okay. Now on the basis of DNA, we have deoxyvira or DNA viruses and we have ribovira or RNA viruses. Okay, so now even now the deoxyvira again has, has three structural forms. Okay, so it either can be deoxyhelical. So if it's helical, it will be deoxy. Helical. Okay. If the shape is cubical, then it will be deoxy cubicum. And if it's binal, it will be deoxy binals or binal. Okay. Now riboviruses, that is RNA viruses, they have two forms. Either it is helical, so it's ribohelica or it is cubical so it is ribo cubica basically the binal form doesn't occur in the riboviruses or rna viruses okay now there are certain examples like dna viruses so in animals in animals most are DNA viruses, while in plants, majority are RNA viruses. Okay. Some of the RNA viruses, some are RNA viruses in animals. are like rabies, then we have uh, poliovirus, then we have certain retroviruses like HIV or AIDS virus. Okay. Similarly in plants majority are iron, RNA viruses, some DNA viruses that are important are like cauliflower mosaic virus
okay so this is all about the classification so how the viruses are classified are basically on the genetic material okay now genetic material can be dna or it can be rna if it's dna then it is called as deoxyvira or dna viruses if it's rna then ribovira or rna viruses now again they have three kind of forms so if it's helical it's the shape is helical it is deoxy helica if it's cubical it's deoxy cubica if it's binary it's deoxy binary in dna viruses all three forms are present in riboviruses or rna viruses only two forms are present that is helical and cubical so we have ribohelica and ribocubica now in animals most or majority of the viruses are dna viruses and it is opposite in case of plants so they majority have RNA viruses. Now, some of the viruses in animals are RNA, which are very important, like rabies, polio, or HIV and AIDS virus. Then, some of the DNA viruses are uh, some of the in plants. Some of them are DNA viruses, and it is example is like cauliflower mosaic virus. So, we have covered definition and history of viruses. Then, we have covered size of viruses, shape, and classification. Okay, so that is all for this video. I hope you understood the entire concept and introduction of viruses. We'll take even more features in the coming videos. And if you have any doubt, I'll, I would again request you to just go on the comment section and mention the doubt so that we can clarify it in the upcoming videos. And if you liked it, just uh, like the video, share it among your friends and do subscribe to my channel. Thank you.